morning at 3 we may see some trucks attempting to get through to log the right of way. We're going to have to differentiate them. So we're going to go through all the peaceful avenues we can. <coughs> but a way of a warrior is you go through, expend all peaceful avenues first, and when all those fail it's war. And that is the way of the warrior. <laughs> Show up. Postal Gasway. Yeah. Trans Canada. Yeah. So you guys know you guys don't have permission to be here, right? Um, I'm not this aware of anything. Just here safety. If you would like us to leave, we'll leave. No, Trans Canada has already been warned, right? The equipment will be confiscated if you guys return. <laughs>
we are. That's how I know you'll come crawling back to me again.
wetsuit in camp today, more arrests. A filmmaker inside the police cordon with the wetsuit in captured the arrest of hereditary chiefs. The freelancer has been at the camp for months, sharing his footage with pipeline opponents. News of those arrests sparked another protest through downtown Vancouver this afternoon. This is the second demonstration here in Vancouver. They've disrupted traffic and it's just one of many across the province. stop us. We are peaceful people, but we do have a right to be on our territory. What is your answer? Police did allow them through, but stopped them short of any construction vehicles. The chiefs have been hoping to halt construction of a $6 billion pipeline meant to carry liquefied natural gas to port on the BC coast, a project supported by many elected band councils and the province. Talks between the chiefs and the province broke down earlier this week. never ceded or surrendered our lands to anybody here. There's no treaty. There's no relationship built with any government in the past. None of our people signed anything to let them make decisions in, on our territory. Swanton is under attack! What do we do? They stood their ground despite repeated warnings from police. The Vancouver police will arrest and remove any person who violates this court order. Officers moved in, arresting 43 people, some carried out in the arms of officers, but none was charged. Who do you think you are? Aren't you tired of feeling ashamed of yourselves? Demonstrators say they support Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs who want to keep the project out of their territory, despite approval by the province and support from 20 elected chiefs. We're not following hereditary chiefs' laws. You are not following your own laws. After four days, Port of Vancouver officials asked the court to intervene. BC's premier saying it was necessary. 
I respect everyone's right to uh, lawful protest, uh, but when you're interfering with the uh, operation of the economy at the ports and uh, through the city here in the Lower Mainland, I think that becomes a challenge, and that's why injunctions were granted. <laughs> Pipelines are trying to go right through where the salmon spawn, and that's where we decided to put the action camp in. Last year, we put a cabin right smack in the way of the pipeline so that they would not go through. And we just recently, last year, we fenced it off because we saw ribbons in there for drill pads for them to start do test drills so they can drill a pipe right under the river there. We've been hearing all the media of all these pipes breaking and waterways getting damaged and we just not gonna accept that risk because we don't want to be 25 years, 10 years down the road telling our kids, oh, we used to hunt moose here and we used to fish.
This is our dairy going right there. Talbridge Qua. Could be um, Trans Canada because they're the ones that didn't submit their route through here yet. Hmm. But I know Enbridge was coming, wanted to come in here. Pacific Trails is on this side. And we didn't know where Trans Canada wanted to go. So this is probably Trans Canada crew coming back in. They did put up stakes in here before and we were them all out a couple years ago. About three years ago, we came out and tore them all out. But this whole area between here and the truck, that valley, that's where they want to run all the pipelines through. There's no frickin' we ever gonna let any of those guys in. Say Hagwalnas at me. Can I lay a hamzak at this? Not sell you, the nibis have a bay yak. Can I look no a den? Say you, I look no a den. Be just us. Zana no yenta or as endle. Titani. Get titani, adienta or endle. You can't bulldoze over my people. Our land, our final say, no pipelines will come in our land. here so you don't know we live here Our final say, no pipelines will be coming on our land. We're peacefully asking you to leave. You don't live here, so you don't know. We have berry patches here. We have medicines here. The bears live here. The moose live here. We live here. Gumuki stay away court case. The Kala court case, which I am the house chief of, and also the Nicole case. 
all those cases we won. And through that, those three, we told the world who we are, how we looked after our land, and who are the true caretakers of the land. And yet, the governments and industry are still dancing around that. hereditary chief comes uh, exactly that through the hereditary system. It's not by election, it's, uh, it's by consensus of the clan members that uh, they put you into this position.
federal officials and all elected officials only have assumed and presumed authority over the Wet'suwet'en territory. The territory, the yinta, the land, the air, the water, that all belongs to the Wet'suwet'en people. We've never ceded nor surrendered nor signed a treaty to give away any of that authority to anybody. So if there are decisions to be made on our land, it is our decision and nobody else's. <laughs> Parents told me when I was very young, they say, don't ever let anybody pull the wool over your eyes when you when you get older. I said, we never signed nothing. This land is still yours to protect. And that's the way I've looked at it all my life. There's no such thing as crown land in my books because we never signed the land to nobody. Uh, it still belongs to us, the First Nation.
province of uh, British Columbia and you know, the federal government, they talk about reconciliation. When they talk about reconciliation, and they undermine their own words by trying to shove pipelines down our throat or industry down our throat, and it's just not the way we do business. There will be no pipeline to enter the children territory. The decision-making powers for our traditional territories lie with us, the hereditary chiefs. We've gone to the highest courts of Canada to prove our title and our responsibilities and our ability to be the authority of these territories. The provinces and the federal government have decided that they don't want to deal with us, that they would rather go to people who are willing to say yes to them. And we're sick and tired of that. We have to stand up for our traditional territories. We have to make sure that we are the ones that make the decisions on them. If we say no to any kind of development because it would impede on our ability to take care of our future generations, then that's going to be the answer. So what if we told you that the federal government doesn't have jurisdiction on our territory? 
50% of your proposed project is on Wet'suwet'en territory and all the hereditary chiefs have had said 100% no to this project. We, we have the final say, not the federal government, not the provincial government. Well, we, we're, uh, I, I hear what you're saying, um, and we're following the, like I said, the, the regulatory process that we have in front of us, and uh, we, we can talk to you about some of the conditions that uh, include environmental monitoring and a lot of surveys, of, uh, environmental surveys, and uh, we can talk to you about that. And what have we told you? We know that's bullshit and it doesn't work. You look at the state of our whole planet, what it's in, and all our waters are being destroyed. The air is destroyed. All the trees are being destroyed. You can't continue to bulldoze over my people. Our lands, our final say. No pipelines will be coming on our lands. legislature much the same and nearby a small group put their message on display demonstrators vowing to continue disruptions Position takes us into speaking in the feast hall with authority, with the, all of the clan members and your clan in mind, and uh, a, a total trust that we're uh, acting on the best behalf of our clan and our nation. We have to think about the land, we have to think about the water, we think about the uh, air, the animals, and uh, a lot of the authority that we have is that, uh, that we make sure that uh, there's an abundance of ways that we can live off the, off the land. And uh, today it's being threatened, and a uh, majority of our people uh, are not agreeing with the, the fact that uh, gas and the gas pipeline um, is a good thing for our Wet'suwet'en people. Our people have had enough, and we're not gonna just stand here and take the bullying and take it without a fight. We're, we've had enough of the spoiled brats stealing off our lands and not accepting no for an answer and we're going to be the stern parent and say no you're not coming in. 
Many First Nations support the Wet'suwet'en, including the Union of BC Indian Chiefs and the Gitsan Hereditary Chiefs. Canadians have offered their support as well. The Council of Canadians have called on Canadians to support the Wet'suwet'en. Thousands of high school students and university students have left their classes and marched in support of them as well. More recently, the BC Human Rights Commissioner has called on Canada to stop the eviction of Wet'suwet'en peoples, prohibit the use of lethal weapons by the RCMP, and they also want to guarantee that no force will be used against the Wet'suwet'en. Commissioner Govender emphasized that Wet'suwet'en peoples have been peaceful in their opposition to the pipelines on their land and should never be faced with violence by the Canadian state. Amnesty International also reminded governments that the Wet'suwet'en have a right, a very clear right to free prior and informed consent on any project that may impact their rights. Amnesty also called on Canada to fully comply with the United Nations Committee for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination's recommendations that 1. Canada freeze any present and future approvals of large-scale projects until free prior informed consent is obtained. Number 2. To cease forced evictions from traditional lands. Number 3. To guarantee that no force will be used. And number four, to withdraw all policing and security forces from native territories. I think that every First Nation person in Canadian should pressure the government to comply with those United Nations recommendations.